Hello there guys and gals. On today's episode, I've got to attempt to make some actual production on my no-name Nationals dart. So let's spring into action. That way we can get this dart perched on top of this axle. So this is an eight and three quarter axle housing out of a B-body Mopar. I believe it was out of a 68 Roadrunner or satellite or something of that vintage based off the length. Now I plan on putting this in my 69 Dart. We already know this axle's too wide for that car, which most of y'all already know. I've alluded to just hacking the quarters on that thing and giving it that super stock look. But one thing I need to address first are these leaf spring perches. On a B body, they're 44 inches apart. On an A body, they're 43. At least that's what Google told me. So what I need to do is move these perches in. Now several of y'all have suggested just hogging out the side of this spring perch and you can slide that spring right in. Which, hold on, if it's just a half inch difference there. Now well, honestly, I could just drill a hole right there. U-bolts getting in the way? Yeah, I think the U-bolts might get in the way. Think of all the time I would save doing this. Only spring perch mounts, it's a lot of work. A lot of grinding. Oh, and it's so hot out here. Could be inside watching YouTube and procrastinating on other things that I need to do in the dart. But I'm not going to do that. I got a new set of spring perches, so I'm going to cut these off and then weld these back on. Hopefully a half an inch more in than these. Seems like a lot of work for uh, half an inch. But knowing my luck, if I hog these out, I'll find other problems. So we're going to try this. Whoa, the Google was right. These are 44. Since these are 44 inches apart, Logic dictates all I need to do is move these a half inch in on each side. That should give me 43, I think. Half an inch there, half an inch there, 43. You know, math, all that good stuff. Now for you OG Duddy adventurers, you know this isn't my first time to do new spring perches on an axle. Y'all have seen me cut these off and weld on new spring perches on the Dana 70 in the Death Charger. So I'm no stranger to welding the axle housings. Except when it comes to these. You see, I'm used to Dana 70s and Dana 60s, which are much thicker than this 8 and 3 quarter. So one thing that I was warned about, especially on 8 and 3 quarter axles, was warpage. Which is something I've never bothered with on any Dana axles. Mainly because I was welding on Dana 60s and 70s. And if I wasn't warping those, beating them on the rocks, I don't think the welder was going to do it. Now this, on the other hand, I've been told several times that you can tweak these axles. So I'll have to use a little bit more finesse on my welding. Because I don't have a jig kit to check to see if this is even true. We'll have to assemble it and just see how many bearings it eats up before I find out that this axle is not straight. First thing I want to tackle is I need to check the degree of this axle housing versus the degree of the spring purchase. That way when I weld them all together, you know, they match. So first, I'm going to get my angle of the dangle finder and zero it on this pumpkin. Then, I'm going to compare it to the angle of the dangle of these spring perches, which is surprisingly off. Not really. I probably should have taken the time to, you know, clean up the paint off this. It's probably stated right now that this isn't a how-to. This is just more of how I'm doing it. Also, some of y'all think that I'm sandbagging and this video is being filmed like three months ago. Actually, most of my videos are one week behind. Normally, when you are watching them, I filmed them last weekend or the day before. Unfortunately, I'm just not as prepared as most YouTubers. Yeah, so the amount of work I have to do on the dart, yeah, you're currently seeing one week behind. Yeah, I've got a lot of work to do. Okay, there we go. After uh, at least cleaning the dirt off these perches, looks like we got 510 on this one and 510 on this one and zeroed on the housing. Now normally, I would work on grinding this weld in order to pop these out. That's at least how I used to do them on Dana 60s and 70s. But, hearing about these axle tubings and warping, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this up this way and cut it up this way. Then I will grind down the excess. I'm trying to prevent cutting into this axle tube. So let's see how it goes. I 
guess technically I could straddle this. The math does work. Yep, I did nick it. Let's cut that other side off. So, so far, I managed to get both these spring perches off. Haven't hurt myself. And the big mountain of beer boxes has not lit on fire yet. We'll take that as a win. So I've got some sanding disc here that I'm gonna try out on this. Let's see if I can get these cleaned up. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. All right, got the other side knocked out. We're not gonna talk about that gouge. I might have got a little too rowdy with the 40 grit. All right, let's set up that digital degreeer. Find out where we're at. That's pretty dang close. Yep. And that's a half an inch in. Real question is, is why is, why is there a square in the back and a circle in the front? I might have to look that up. Also, fun fact. Um, when you get your uh, digital degree or working, make sure you look at the arrows on the side of the screen that tell you which way up and which way down. I didn't do it on that axle. Luckily, the Dodge Whisperer's axle is sitting right here. Yeah, he's inadvertently helping me and not even here. Dang it. <laughs> Always clean your ground first, folks right here where it's actually got ground metal. Well, you know, heat's a thing. All right. Okay. Not too shabby. Hopefully I did this correct. At least that one matches that one. Which came off a of zero on that, which I probably should have wire wheeled that now that I think of it. Let's just go with it. Oh, we should probably check uh, overall, since that's the whole point of this. Make sure that's right. We should be dead on or good enough for the quality of work on this channel. I think that's going to work. All right, let's weld all this and not look at that digital meter ever again. I will say this digital meter is very, very sensitive. And I've seen plenty of people set up these uh, spring purchase, you know, with those analog gauges. So I'm going to say close enough is good enough. Well, I started welding, and then I had a snafu. Remember folks, always check your equipment before you start. Yep. Uh, uh. Oh, I just hate wasting wire. There it is. Here, folks, you know, maintain the equipment you use and it'll take care of you. Or do what I do and completely forget to maintain anything and then wonder why it doesn't work. All right, let's try this again. Again, my 
last weld. All right, I realized it started welding like crap again. I was too busy staring at that to realize this was happening again. <laughs> All right, let's fix this again. Oh, why, why? Literally one more weld and this happens. But again, this is on me. I haven't been maintaining this and I didn't properly set this up because I got in a hurry. Okay, now clean up this rat mess. Do I don't even have the right wheels on this thing? Oh, <laughs> well, crap. That explains it. Got the wrong wheels on this. Those wheels are for this welding wire. Not that welding wire. Oh, crap. We don't, oh, we don't have uh, the wheels for 24. We only got them for 30. Let's make this work just long enough to get one more weld. And then, you know, I'll fix it properly later. I promise. I definitely won't just keep using this. And I must have forgot to uh, swap these. It seems to be working a little bit better, but I'm pretty sure... Oh, there it is. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a spacer here, because I don't think any of this stuff's lining up properly. Actually, no, it's not. But I don't have time for that right now. I got one more weld. What is, what is this? Oh, that's not even the right tip. Oh. Wait, did I set this up for someone else? Fortunately, I think I did. Oh, that seems to work a lot better. All right, guys and gals, uh, pro tip. Use the correct tip and the proper wheels when setting up your welder. I think I must have gotten in a hurry when I was working on the uh, crew cab door frames and uh, didn't set any of this up correctly. Okay, enough failure. Let's weld one more weld. <laughs> Pretty at all. Don't worry, I just blame the welder on this one. And by blame the welder, I mean the person that set it up. Mainly me. So, yeah, I'm actually am blaming the welder. Alright, let's see how bad I did. Alright, with a uh, poorly set up welder and a poor welder, I didn't do that great. Some are better than others, and they don't look spectacular. I think they'll hold. Some of the welds came out halfway decent. I just wish I had uh, caught that welder issue before I got impatient and just powered through it. But like most of my projects, it's good enough. So next time, we're going to clean this axle up because some of y'all might notice it's pretty rusty on the inside. Really rusty on the inside. We're going to need something to get in there and get it clean. Stick around, like, comment, subscribe because next time, we're going to blast this axle housing with this doohickey. Comment down below if you know what it is. <laughs> <laughs>